Hello friends, this is my review of the Vault-X 12 pocket zip up binder. This binder has a total capacity of 480 cards and some of its main features include water resistant material and side loading pockets. I like the binder, but if you want to hear my in-depth review, keep watching. This sucker comes in a box. This is interesting because I've only ever seen plastic wrapping on binders. I'm guessing this is because I ordered it off Amazon since I've never seen a boxed binder in a retail store before. Anyways, it looks and feels nice. First impressions are good. There's a little window so you can see which color you're getting. The box adds protection from shipping too, which can be nice. I've had Amazon packages arrive that look like they've been stomped by a Snorlax, so the extra box might be useful. It looks and feels familiar, the binder I mean, and I like the green zipper. It adds a little bit of character, a little bit of that Vault X branding. The first zip feels smooth and soft. Overall, I think this is going to be a good binder. First, we're going to talk about the exterior. It comes in seven different colors, which is pretty wicked since most just come in black. I picked black because all my binders are black, but I almost picked pink because I like pink. I appreciate the option. Initially, I met with a premium feel. The binders I grew up with in the early days of card collecting weren't like this, so the faux leather always feels so luxurious to me. Speaking of the material, faux leather is water resistant. This is helpful if you, for some reason, have to carry your binder through the rain. Maybe you're going from your house to your car or from school to the bus. A little bit of rain should be fine and the water beads off nicely. An added benefit here is the cleaning ability. This material is really easy to clean up and the water dries fast, revealing the sleek black surface. Somehow mine's covered in cat hair even though I've only had it for five minutes. The material is really nice. It's elegant and mature in my opinion. The average person might think this is a notebook or an expensive portfolio of some sort. And I like the way it looks on a shelf. All of my black binders beside each other look pretty cool. I should mention that the material surrounding the binder, like uh, to which the zipper teeth are attached to, is not water resistant. If you get this wet, it will probably soak through. I also noticed that the spine is very stiff on this one. When I open the binder, it doesn't want to lay flat. My guess is that it will wear over time and lose some of its rigidity, but for now it's kind of annoying to be honest. Oddly enough, I haven't experienced this before with another binder, still it's not a deal breaker or anything like that. Next, I want to talk about the interior. The first thing you'll notice when you open the binder for the first time is actually my favorite feature. The inside of the covers are soft. I'm not sure exactly what this material is called, but it's a soft suede or Alcantara-like material. And this has a pragmatic purpose too. A hard inside cover will rub and, rear and wear your front page over time, but the soft material won't. Your front page will always remain crystal clear. So the plastic sheet that makes up the clear part of the pockets is fastened to the pages in this perforated style, welded by heat to the black part of the page. That's not really important, but what it achieves is a very secure card pocket. I've intentionally tried to rip these apart before and they're surprisingly strong for what they are. So there's no fear of your pages falling apart unless there's some sort of manufacturer defect. This also results in a tight fitting pocket. Even without sleeves, these cards stay in place very securely. I wouldn't recommend inserting unsleeved cards into these pockets, which I'll circle back to in a moment, but if you have to, you don't have to worry about them falling out. 
and if they were to fall out, these are side loaded pockets. Remember the clear pocket pages that are made for three ring binders, the ones that we used when we were kids? Those are usually top loaded pockets and just tipping your binder upside down would result in a catastrophe. Yu-Gi-Oh cards are smaller. If you're wondering how Yu-Gi-Oh cards fit, then you're in luck, they fit just fine. And they fit securely too. Uh, they aren't any looser than a regular sized card. And here I'm inserting one unsleeved, and you'll see that it's a tight fit too. If you collect a Yu-Gi-Oh, then you'll appreciate this since most products are designed for the standard sized trading card. Okay, so inserting and removing cards is relatively simple with these pockets. They can sometimes be a little tough to get centered. And since the pockets are so tight fitting, they'll stay crooked unless you fix them. And then if you fix them a lot, then you can maybe bend the pockets or, or perhaps even damage your card. But here's what bothers me. The pages are a little rough and this can result in damaged corners if you aren't careful. Sometimes it can be a struggle to slip the card under the clear plastic and the corners rub against the rough page. Listen to the sound it makes. Of course, this is minor and maybe even nitpicking, but I wouldn't risk it with my favorite cards. As long as you sleeve them, everything should be fine. For the third segment, I want to do a quick comparison. If you just search card binder on Amazon, you're greeted with a huge selection. There are a few big name brands like Ultra Pro, Ultimate Guard, Gem Loader, and Vault-X. But then there are a plethora of odd brand names you've never heard of. The interesting thing is that these no-name binders are identical to the Vault-X binders. Check this out. It's the exact same aside from the brand name. All of these binders obviously come this, from the same factory. Actually, I reviewed one of these on my channel just a few months ago. So yeah, I'm kind of reviewing the same binder right now. The Amazon listing said that the brand was Pakesi, but when I got it, the brand name Toron was embossed on the cover. I inspected the listing further and found that only the Vault X listing offers the binder in different colors. So that would actually be a logical reason to choose vault -X over the no-name brands. In this case, vault -X obviously has a superior marketing budget and has involved itself in further outreach. They even sponsor influencers, which are all factors that boost their sales. The reason you trust vault -X is that you're familiar with the brand vault -X. Interestingly, this ties into our discussion on price. I think the binder is priced fairly at $30 USD, and $30 isn't much when taking your card's protection into consideration. However, I was scrolling through the Amazon results page when I saw this binder. Yep, it's the exact same as the vault -X one I'm reviewing right now, but this one's only $20. So for two thirds of the price, you can get the exact same binder. I like to look at the per pocket price Sometimes, so the vault -X binder costs 30. If you divide that by 480, the number of pockets, we get a price of about six cents per pocket. If we take the no-name binder and also divide its price by 480, we get about four cents per pocket. Again, two thirds of the price. But both binders are in the five cent per pocket range, which is normal for a nice binder. A premium top loader binder can be 30 cents per pocket and a dirt cheap three ring binder can be less than one cent per pocket. Anyways guys, that's my review. If you actually watched all the way to the end, thank you. Like the video if you think I earned it and leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future reviews. Take care.